Right, so for the next one, um, which I won't put on the board, uh, but just if you look at the paper, it says which element has been oxidised and which element has been reduced in this reaction. So let's have a look. Nitrogen here is going to be minus three because each hydrogen is plus one. Oxygen here is zero. Nitrogen here is going to be plus two because oxygen is minus two and hydrogen there is plus one and oxygen is minus six. So nitrogen has been oxidized from minus three to plus two and oxygen has been reduced from zero to minus two. Okay, so we're now on to neutralization reactions. We want to determine the entropy change for this neutralization reaction and it wants me to write the overall equation for the reaction to take place. So what have I got? I have got potassium hydroxide, so KOH, and that is reacting with H2SO4. So I've got my alkali, I've got my acid, so my salt is going to be potassium sulfate, and I'm going to make water as well. And to get that to balance, I am going to need 2KOH, and I will make two like so. Okay, it now wants me to calculate the entropy change for that reaction. So the first thing I'm going to work out is the energy produced. And of course the energy produced is in joules, and that's the mass of water. Um, you've got 35 centimetres cubed of potassium hydroxide and 35 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid. So in total you have got 70 centimetres cubed. So I've got 70 for water, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18, and my temperature change, um, it's gone from 19.5 to 36, so my temperature change is 16.5 degrees, and if you pop that in your calculator, you will get 4,827 joules, or 4.827 kilojoules. Right, I now need to work out the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. So, moles of KOH is going to equal the volume, which is 35, times the concentration, which is uh, 2.4 over 1,000, and that comes to 0 0.084 and then to find delta H is that number divided by that number and delta H is going to equal minus because my temperature's gone up it's an exothermic reaction 4.8227 divided by 0 0.084 which gives me minus 57.5 kilojoules per mole. They're the wrong units that they've put there. So minus 57.5 kilojoules per mole. Explain why the answer to part two, so this one, is the entropy change for neutralization. Um, it's because one mole of water is used. This is per mole of KOH because I've done it here for one mole of KOH. If we go back to the equation, which was we wrote earlier, we said it was um, H2SO4 plus two KOH gives me K2SO4 plus, plus two H2O. But if that's now gone down to one, it becomes a half H2SO4 one of those goes to half of that, and one of those, it's per mole. If I've got one of that, it's one mole of water, and therefore it is per mole of, if I just go back to that, it's per mole of water. So one mole of water is formed. In this experiment, the student uses a thermometer um, with an uncertainty of 0.5 degrees C in each region. 
uh, what's the error? I used the thermometer twice, so uh, it's two times 0.5 divided by the value, the temperature difference was 16.5 times 100, and your percentage uncertainty is 6%. Okay, time to do an empirical formula now. I have got hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Hydrogen, let's do the same with nitrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen is 0 0.025, oxygen is 0 0.300, and nitrogen is 0 0.175. You divide by the relative atomic mass of each, like so. This you get 0 0.025. This becomes 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.01875, and this is 0 0.0125. You divide by the smallest one, which is of course this one. That's one, that is 1 1.5, and that is two. So you have to times everything by two, which gives you four to three to two. So the empirical formula is H for O to N, like so. Oh, N2, rather. Okay. No, it's not H for O3, N2. Okay, helps if I get the numbers right. Okay, so that's the formula of my salt. So, uh, uh, so how could I rearrange that into a more reasonable... Um, formula. Well, you're looking for, if I take the hydrogens, I've got H4, take the N the other side, um, and then I have got uh, H4N and then NO3. So, uh, or alternatively, NH4NO3, which is, of course, ammonium nitrate, like so. So if I wanted to make ammonium nitrate, what acid would I use? Well, the acid I would use would be nitric acid to get the nitrate. How would I get ammonia? Well, the base I would use would be ammonia. Okay, so this is a gif of a question. It wants the mechanism of free radical substitution of ethane reacting with chlorine. So. Here we go. Initiation, you need UV light and Cl2 goes to two chlorine-free radicals. Um, initiation and for that you need UV light. The next stage is propagation. And for propagation, you take ethane C2H6 plus Cl dot is going to give me C2H5 dot plus HCl and then this guy C2, whoops, C2H5 meets dot meets a chlorine molecule to give me C2H5 Cl and you get another chlorine free radical and then a termination step would be C2H5 dot plus Cl dot to give you C2H5 Cl, like so. Okay, so the final question wants me to analyse a mass spec of an alkane. Alkane only contains carbon and hydrogen and it's saturated. So, let's look at my molecular iron peak. That comes in at 58. If it's 58, it's C4 H10 plus as your molecular iron. So you know it's either going to be four carbons in a row, like so, or three in a row. So it's either butane or methyl propane. Which one is it? Well, let's look at peak number two. Peak number two comes in at 43. And 43 would be C3 H7 plus. And peak number 3 is 29. And 29 is C2 H5 plus. So, why would the students 
come to different conclusions. So one student analysed peaks one and two. Um, one and concluded the alkene was one of two structures. The other identified all three and was identified the alkane. So if you, ident if you just looked at one or two, it could be either of these structures because both of them would give you a fragment of C3H7. So C3H7 could be that fragment, C3, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or it could be that fragment with this methyl group going up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if you just analyse those two peaks, you wouldn't know what it is. However, when you bring in peak number three, which is C2H5, C2H5 can only come from this molecule, which is that fragment coming off like so. This, you can't break up to get a C2H5 fragment. And therefore, the alkane must be butane. It is this guy.